Let's take this text. God is a shelter. God is a shelter. Amen. As we begin to look at this writing from King David, this is said to have taken place around uh, 2nd Chronicles uh, 15, uh, chapters 15 through 18, when, uh, when his son Absalom uh, has has risen up to overthrow his kingdom. And if you know anything about David and his and his children, uh, as we, we briefly mentioned this morning in Sunday school, that uh, David had a jacked up family. Uh, so if anybody has any dysfunction in your family, don't think that you are the only one. Uh, and, 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 and I mean, because if there can be dysfunction in the king's palace, what makes you think that there can't be dysfunction in your family? And while we're speaking of family dysfunction, we can even look at it and say that, that thank you, God, that you didn't come down in a perfect, pristine family because, because there was dysfunction in Jesus' family. Then that lets us know that we serve a God who can handle dysfunction. All right. But David is on the run from his son. Mm -hmm. And his son has risen up to kill him. And his son, Absalom, has, has honestly has really lost his mind. Mm -hmm. uh, that you know that, that, that he has he has risen up to try to kill his father. And not only that, but he was such a uh, he was such a crooner and he was he was so eloquent and eloquent in speech that he was able to persuade some of the David's followers to turn against David and get on his side. Alright. So that lets us know nothing against anybody or any one person. Mm -hmm. But that lets us know that anybody can turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, these were some people who were loyal to David. And because the right person came along saying the right things at the right time, they got them, he got them to change their mind mm -hmm. and to change their loyalty from King David to Absalom. And so once Absalom got enough, uh, enough people behind him, he said, we're going to go at King David. I'm going to take his throne, and I'm going to kill him. And so what David decides to do, instead of fighting his own child, he decides to flee. And as David is fleeing from Absalom, he flees from Saul, he, he's just on the run. And it's at this moment to where he is, he is, he is running, uh, in, uh, he is, this sense has been taking place in the Judean, Judean countryside. And on the Judean countryside, it's, it's, it's cliffs and rocks and, and, and all of this and jagged edges. And, and this is where he is finding himself when he begins to pen this song, he writes down his prayer. David says, hear my cry, O oh God. Uh, so I guess I can even take a time out even real quick and to say, look at what David says. Hear my cry, O oh God. Which means that there is a time in your life, and there's a time in David's life, where these little silent, cute prayers don't work. All right. Being cute in prayer is not sufficient all the time, because sometimes I might find myself in a position and in a place 
to where me trying to say what I want to say to God in, in, in my head and in my heart, that sometimes that don't work and sometimes that I just got to cry out to God. Oh, yeah. David says, hear my cry, that, that this, is, uh, this is not some uh, 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 patience or this is not some uh, prayer that David is crying when, when, uh, when it's just saying when everything is going okay and I really don't need nothing right now. And, but, but David is at a point in his life to where he is absolutely on the run and he really doesn't know if he's going to make it another day. And so David says, hear my cry. That, that, that David, he says, hear my cry, O God, and attend to my prayer. Attend to my prayer. God, and David is asking God not only, not only to just listen to my prayer, but be active in my prayer. He, 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 is, he, he is crying out to God. And, and, and David is crying out to God because David realizes that there's nobody else that can help him outside of God. All right. And he's saying that God, if you don't do it, then it won't get done. All right. He says, hear my cry, oh God, attend to my prayer. He says, look at this, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I know my more than one person that say anything, and that's because you may not understand what David is really saying. But, Look at what David is saying. David says, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you. Let me explain this just a second. Every Jew felt like the center of the earth was Jerusalem. Especially in biblical times, in Old Testament, they felt, they felt like Jerusalem was the center of the earth because that's where the temple was that's where the Ark of the Covenant was. And if you know anything about the Ark of the Covenant, that is where the literal physical presence of God was said to dwell while it was here on earth. Oh, yeah. And so with the physical presence of God being on earth in, uh, in, in the Ark of the Covenant, in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Holy of Holies, in the temple, that they felt like that was the most central place on the earth because I, I know that I would have my sense of wherever God is. And so they felt like that that was the most, the, the center of the earth because that's where God was. And everybody wanted to go to Jerusalem because they wanted to be in the presence of God. And what David is saying is now that I am outside of Jerusalem, I am far from God because I'm not in the city where his presence is dwelling. Right. And he says that now I am at the end of the earth. And David is saying that God, even no matter where my geographical location may be, God, what, no matter where my spiritual location may be, God, I know that I'm not close to your temple, and I may not feel close to you right now, but God, I'm going to cry out to you. All right. All right. David says, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, now. Has anybody ever experienced that, that, that whole notion of being spiritually distant from God? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, yes. that moment to where you cried out to God and you've been praying and you've been fasting and you've been reading. And, and it seems like the more you try to get closer to God and it seems as if that he pushes the finish line back a little bit further or he pushes his presence back away from you that it seems like no matter how hard you pray, no, no matter how long you pray that you can't get into God's presence. This is what David is feeling like that he feels like that I'm spiritually distant from God. He says that you're, geographically I'm not close to the temple of God. Now see, it would be different if, Jacob, if David was still in Jerusalem and instead he feels spiritually distant he can always go to the temple and get into the literal and physical presence of God but David says that God I feel distant from you I know that you had moved I've moved but, but even though I'm spiritually distant from you it would be okay if I could go to the church okay okay uh, it, 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 it's, it's one of those things that's when, when, when I know that sometimes I'm tired and I, I, and I just don't feel like being in Bible study, but, but I know that if I can just get to the church, yeah, all right. that 
And sometimes on, way, on Sundays that I, I really don't feel like coming, I really don't have the strength and the energy to preach, but, but I know that if I can just get to the church, there's something that gives me strength, that there's something that gives me energy, there's something that, that builds me up and lifts me up, that once I know I've come to the church, and I know that I will be strengthened because I know that the presence of God lies in this place, and if I can just get here, uh, the, the week may have been long, my family may have been on my nerves, but I know that if I can just get to the church, that, that if I can just get to the church, that everything will be all right. That, that if I can just get here, this is... This is what David is saying. He is saying that God, no matter what, I'm going to cry out to you. God, I can't get to the church. And God, that not only can I not get to the church, but I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying. God, I've tried the cute little prayers and they, they don't seem to work. God, I've tried all of the cliches that I know and they, they don't seem to work. But, but sometimes, God, I just got to say, God, I need you. David, David is saying, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you. He, he, he is saying that, that God, I'm on this rocky hillside in Judea. God, I'm far from the church. I'm far from the building. But God, even though I'm far from the building, I know you supersede the building and you can't be held in just one building. So God, I know that if I cry out to you, uh -huh. I, I, I know that if I, if I reach out to you, uh -huh. that your hand is strong enough and long enough to reach back to me. Oh, yeah. Says, he says that from the end of the earth, that I will cry to you. <laughs> I, I, I love David because David, David is being, as, as they say, David is being 100. Because David says, he says that God, I don't do everything right. I don't always walk this life in the straight line that you would have me to walk in. I, I, I don't always say what you would have me to say all the time. And I, I don't always go where you have me to go. Look at, look at this. He says, from the end of the earth, I will cry out to you. <coughs> David also says to us that I, I don't have everything all together like everyone may think. He says, no, I, 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 know, I know it may look like I got it all together. I, 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 y'all, if, if you were really to, to, to peel back the curtains of my life, you will see yeah. how, 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 how broken I am. And if you really peel back the curtains of my family, you will really see all the dysfunction that's going on. But, but not that we're trying to hide it, but we can cover it up pretty good. And, and I can know that I can come into the church and I can yeah. put a smile on my face and that'll, that'll keep everybody from asking me what's really going on and how are you really doing. Look at what David says. He says that when my heart is overwhelmed, That word overwhelmed in its original language means totally consumed. He says it, it, it has it has overwhelmed has several meanings. It's, it's totally consumed. It, it, it means discouraged. It means weak. <coughs> look, look at look at this king. This king is writing down for the entire world to see that sometimes I get weak. Sometimes I get discouraged. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That I don't have it all together at all times. Mm -hmm. That sometimes I, I, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. Sometimes I get weak. Sometimes I get frustrated. Sometimes I don't want to go on. Sometimes yeah. I don't know how to go on. Sometimes I don't know the right move to make. Sometimes I don't know the right words to say. And everybody in the kingdom doesn't see that because when they look at me, they see the king and yeah. they say that the king is not supposed to have any problems. The king is supposed
supposed to have it all together. In fact, you are the king. You should be leading and guiding and directing us. You're not supposed to go through the same things that we go through. But David has said that I need help. David says that God, when my heart is overwhelmed, that when I'm, I'm hurt, I'm battered, I'm bruised, I'm discouraged, I'm, I'm totally consumed and I'm totally overwhelmed. He says that my, my problems have come completely swallowed me up. Look at Look at this king say that even though I'm a king, I still got problems. David, David is pouring out his heart to God. He said, God, even though I have this position, God, even though you've given me this title, God, I still got problems. I, I don't care how many people lift me up and boost me up and put me on this pedestal and put me here, but God, I still got problems. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but 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 I know that somebody in this church has said that, that God, my heart is overwhelmed. I'm, I'm totally consumed. I don't know what I'm going to do about this problem. I, I don't know how I'm going to get out of it, but God, I'm starting to feel discouraged. God, I'm starting to feel weak. And God, if you don't do something, nothing will ever be done. Look at, look at this. Look at David. He says, when... When my heart is overwhelmed, that God, when I'm totally consumed, when I'm discouraged, and when I'm weak, God, please don't leave me right then. Right. No, no, God, don't don't leave me, but lead me. Uh -huh. All right. Don't don't leave me, but lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Oh, yeah. yeah. Again, David is 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 taking refuge and found shelter in this cave. In, in, inside the rock. Mm -hmm. And David is looking at his surroundings. And David, like Paul, begins to use word pictures. So let's, let's look at what this king says. David is looking at his current position. And he says, God, please don't leave me, but lead me to the rock that's higher than I am. David has already said that I am not strong enough to handle this. I'm not big enough and I'm not bad enough to go through this. That God, my heart is weak. I'm totally consumed. He says, but when God, I begin to feel weak and he begins to look around him and the only thing he sees is rocks. And he says that the rocks can be sheltered from my enemies. But God, now I'm going to spiritualize this and I see the rocks that are around me. But he says, God, don't let me just look at this rock, but God, take me up to that other rock that's up there. He says, because God, my enemies can get me on this rock. But God, if you lead me to that rock, then I know that nobody can get me. He says, to God, when I begin to feel battered and bruised, when I'm broken, God, in my worst state, God, when my heart is, is, is shattered into pieces, God, when, when I don't know what to do, when I'm pacing the floor, when I'm walking around in circles, God, when I'm about at my wit's end and I'm ready to pull the rest of my hair out, God, I don't know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, or where to do it at, God, that's when I need you to grab me by the hand. But, 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 David says, God, just don't, just don't leave me anywhere. Uh, I, I, I looked at this word lead, and, and it simply means to be led or to be guided. How, however, the, the ending of it is to be led or to be guided on the right path. Oh, yeah. David has said, God, when, when my heart is broken, that God, when, when I'm shattered in pieces and when I don't know what to do, that, that God, I'm going to give it to you. And God, you lead me. But God, just, just don't lead me anywhere. God, lead me on the right path. God, lead me the right way. God, lead me in the way that you would have me to go. God, don't lead me in a way that will, be me, that will take me directly in front of my enemies. God, you lead me into you, Heavenly Father, because God, I know that if I can get to you, God, that's the reason why I'm crying out in the first place. God, because I can't get to the church, and God, because I can't get to the church, God, I feel like I'm far at the end of the earth, and God, I know that I've been praying and praying and praying, and God, it seems like I'm spiritually distant, so God, I can't cry out, I, I can only cry out now, and so now that I'm crying out, God, I need you to lead me up to you. He says, lead me to the rock. Mm -hmm. 
that is higher than I. Lead me to the place that's greater than myself. See, because of David's status, David could have easily began to think that he rose to power and rose to fame because of his attributes. Because, because he is the king. He, 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 began, he could have begun to feel like I'm king because I'm so smart. I, I, I could begin to think that I'm the king because I'm so, uh, uh, I, I, I look so good. That I could have gotten the kingship because, because I know the right moves to make at the right time. That, that I'm king because I'm stronger than everybody else. And anytime somebody else decided that they wanted to come up against me, that I would always defeat them. But, but, but David looks at this and he says that, that yes, I am the king, but I know how I become to get my kingship. That there was nobody but God. And he says that God lead me to a place that's greater than I. Because God, if, if, if I was able to do it, I wouldn't be in this position to begin with. But God, because I am in this position, and that means I'm not able to get myself out of it. And so God says, I'm not able to get myself out of it. God, you lead me to yourself because I know that you can get me out. Amen. Then, then, then David goes on. David goes on, and, and I love this, because this is something that, 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 that has been heavily on me here, here recently. I, I guess God is telling me that I need to start doing it for myself. I need to get back to doing it rather. And, and that's, that's journaling. Right. And, and, and showing how God has made a way time and time again. So, 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 so when I do come into a place where I feel like I'm totally overwhelmed, that I can look back at God and I can, because I look back at God, I can then look forward in God. Look at, look at, look at this, look at this servant David. And, and I, I want you to notice the terminology that David uses. He says, verse 2, from the end of the earth I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Then David's tone begins to shift. Because verse 3, he says, for you have been a shelter for me. Okay. Notice, notice the tense that David uses. Because it's at this moment that David begins to think back and he reflects on what God has been. Because David switches and he uses past tense here. And he is beginning to look at who his God is and what his God has done. And David says that God, when my heart is overwhelmed, that lead me to a place, the rock that's higher than I. But then he says, for God, you have been a shelter for me. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That when I can't get to the church, that when I feel like I'm spiritually distant from God and it seems as if my prayers are going unanswered, it seems as if that they're not even reaching the throne room of heaven because they're getting blocked by the ceiling. And see, David says that now when I feel like I can't go on no more, all that I got to do is look back and I can remember how God made a way before. And because God made a way back then, I can look back even further and God made a way even further back. And he says that, that now that I'm in this position, that now that I'm, my heart is broken, now that I'm discouraged, and now that I'm weak, that, that I ain't got to go too far because I can look back just last week that God made a way again, and I still serve the same God, and he can make a way again. Yeah. Look at this, David. David says, verse 3, he uses four, four word pictures for God, and we'll deal with them real quick. David says, verse 3, for you have been a shelter for me. And, and when you look at that word shelter, he is, is simply saying a refuge or a covering from danger. That David says that God, 
I was once in a dangerous place. That I was once in, in danger. And God, you loved me so much that you saw the danger that I was in and you put something over me and around me to cover me from the danger. That God, you didn't let the danger get me. God hasn't changed. Now, David does not say that God, you didn't let danger come up against me. He says that you've been a shelter. That you've been a refuge. That you've been a, 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 a coverer for me. Uh, so, Malzahn, I got to tell you that just because we are in here today don't mean that we won't have problems to come up in our lives. Don't mean that we won't have enemies in our lives. That don't mean that we won't have danger to come up in our lives. But, but, but because God is who he is, he will allow the danger to come up in our lives. He will allow the problems to come up in our lives. But, but if we run in him, then he is a refuge and he is our shelter. So then, therefore, when the problems come up, you know what? They will come up to us and they may touch us. They may get a hold of us. But they can't overtake us because God is sitting right there watching. And when God says, baby, enough is enough, enough is enough. He says that you are uh, God, that you have been, you have been, meaning that you've done it before, meaning that I've been in some problems before and you made a way, meaning that I've had some issues before and you made a way, meaning that I've had some enemies before and you made a way, meaning that, that this ain't our first rodeo. He says, for you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. David says God goes from being a shelter and a refuge to now being a defender from all harm. Uh -huh. that, that this word strong tower means a defender from all harm. Uh -huh. that, that, that David David is saying that God, we've been through a storm or two before. God, we've been through a battle or two before. And back then, God, you allowed me to run into you and I was safe. And now David is saying, you have been a strong tower from the enemy. That God, when it was something else, you, you made a way. But now God, when, when I look back over my life, and I remember when my enemies were on my trail, that God, you didn't uh, just automatically stop them from coming, but God, you allowed them to pursue me. And then when I ran and I hid in you, that God, you became a strong tower. That God, you are the one who stopped my enemies. God, you are the one who made them stumble and fall. That God, you are the one who kept them from getting to me because you are a defender from all harm. That, that God, it may not have been a physical enemy, but God, it may have been the devil on my track. It may have been one of his messengers, one of his angels. And God, you said that I will defend you at all costs. And so God, when that enemy decided to come up again, me. You decided to be the one who would cover me and keep me safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to. It may just be myself, but God has been a strong tower from the enemy. That God, I don't know how many times that you kept me safe from that straight bullet, God. I don't know how many times you kept me safe from that drunk driver, God. I don't know how many times you kept me safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. That God has kept me safe in the midnight hour when I lay down and go to sleep without a worry on my body. God is the one who allows me to wake up in the morning and get out on these dangerous highways and not have an accident. It's God who is the one who is keeping my children safe day in and day out. It's God who is the one who is the strong tower that's keeping my family safe that I don't get a call in the midnight hour. It's God is the one who's been a strong tower to keep my spot, my home safe from all danger. It's him, it's him, and it's him all along. David says, look at this. He says, first you're my refuge. You've been my shelter. Secondly, you've been my defender from all harm. He says, and now I will abide in your tabernacle forever. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. 
David says to God, this isn't just a one-sided relationship. David says to God that I don't want I, God, I don't want a sugar daddy just for a God. Look at, look at what David says to God. After you do what I've asked you to do, I, I'm not going to kick you out. I'm, I'm not going to have you walk that walk of shame. He says, God, that now that I've asked you to do something and you've shown up, he says, and God, I want to be with you. God, I want to spend time with you. God, I want to be next to you. God, I want to be close to you. God, wherever you are, that's where I want to be. God, I want to dwell in your tabernacle forever. Yes, sir. Yes. And when I was looking at this, I, I, I did a research, and I'm, I'm going through word studies, and, and another word, tabernacle, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do nothing but laugh, because I said, God, you're just that good. Mm -hmm. And then at first I told him, God, you got jokes, because another word for tabernacle is tent. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And I had to laugh because it was just last Sunday yeah. that I was saying that I was going to try and preach a tent. Yeah. I had forgot all about it. And as I'm looking at this, it's saying that the, the way and the word that David is using uh -huh. and what he is using and how he is using what he is using, it goes back to before Solomon built the temple. And when the uh, when the Ark of the Covenant, we remember back in, of course, Old Testament, when when God's uh, the Ark of the Covenant was just uh, dwelling under the tent, yes. and so whenever they would stop, they would pitch the tent, and they would have the tent pulled up, and, and and then they would go in and they would worship God, and then when they got time to move, they would put the put, uh, take the spikes up, they would get the Ark of the Covenant, and they would move, and the next time that they stopped and they would pitch their tent, they would put the tent up. And they would split the Ark of the Covenant in the tent and they would go and they would have prayer and God would come down in the cloud and they said that this is when God would meet with Moses face to face. And it was one of those things as God, what David is saying is God, wherever your presence goes, that's where I want to be at. He says, God, if we're going to be right here, if you're going to be right here, then God, that's where I want to be. God, if you're going across the street, that, then that's where I want to be. He says that I want to abide in your tabernacle forever. He says, he says that he wanted to be where God was. I, 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 don't, I don't know about you, but I know that that's, that's one of the best things to do. Is God, wherever you go, that's, that's, that's where I want to go. God, if you, are, if you are here, then that's where I want to be. God, if you're going down the street and around the corner, that, that's where I want to be also. God, God, please don't go anywhere and allow me not to be with you because, God, I want to follow after you. I want to be close to you. I want to be next to you. God, I want to be closer to you than, than anybody else. God, I value our relationship. And, God, I know if I value our relationship, then I have to be able to spend time with you. i got to be able to put everything else aside and get into your presence because if I value this relationship more than any other relationship, then I gotta make sure that I put the precedence and the authority and, and, and everything on this relationship. He says that I will abide, I will live, I will dwell, I will be in your tabernacle forever. One last thing. David says, and I will trust in the shelter of your wings. All right. David says, God, hear my prayer. God, my heart is breaking. I'm totally consumed. I'm overwhelmed. I'm discouraged and I'm weak. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But God, even though I'm overwhelmed, I'm discouraged, and I'm weak, I'm still crying out to you. Because God, I know who you are. I can't say who you were because you never change. Mm -hmm. But God, I know who you are. Oh, yeah. David says because 
who you are, you have been, you have been this to me a while ago. Who you are is the same person that you were years ago when, when I met you, when I met you. He says, you were a, a, a refuge, you were a shelter from danger. You are a, a defender from all harm. You are the place that I want to be. And then he says, I will trust in the shelter of your wings. One last thing, and I'll let you go. David here is using the word picture of shelter of your wings. David is describing Again, we have to look at what David, where David is. Uh -huh. David is in Judean countryside. Uh -huh. He's in the rocks, on the cliffs. Uh, there's a lot of birds around. And David looks at what he sees. And he says, that God, this is where I want to be. He looks at what he sees, and what he sees, and this is the way that he, David is using the shelter of your wings. He's using the word picture of a mother bird who shelters her young with her wings, who covers them from all hurt, harm, and danger with her wings, who keeps them safe and protected from every enemy by her wings. In fact, the mother bird gets so good at doing this that a lot of times that the enemy doesn't even know that there's a, a baby birds there because the mother bird can keep them covered up yeah. so right. well yeah. that they don't even know that there's babies in there. Right. That sometimes God can keep us covered yeah. so well oh, yeah. that the enemy don't even know what moves we make. Oh, yeah. Because when the enemy tries to come at us, the only thing he sees is God. And he knows that he can't defeat God in fact that he's already lost to God. Oh, yeah. And so because he's already lost to God and he sees, the only thing he sees when he tries to come, come at us is he sees God. Oh, yeah. And he says, well, I can't even get to them because God is protecting them. And in fact, because God is protecting them so well, I don't even know that they back there. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's, I'll close with this. It's almost like, I remember watching, I remember watching uh, The Price is Right. The, the, the real, real Price is Right with, with, with Bob Barker. They would, they would have different things, different prizes. And one of the games would be you have to pick something behind one of the doors. Of course, the, the contestant didn't know what's behind the door. And they had to pick blindly. They were given a, 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 a detailed description of everything that was behind one of the doors. And they would make a selection. Sometimes, Bob Barker would say, hey, I'm going to open one of the doors that's not the right one. Yeah. And now I'm going to give you another chance. Yeah. Do you want to stay with the number that you picked? Right. Or do you want to change doors? Hmm. Now, again, the contestant doesn't know what's behind the door. Right. So they're picking blindly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they would pick the right door. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they wouldn't. And that's how God does us when it comes to our enemies. Right. That sometimes he tells the enemy, you got a door to choose from. I'm not going to tell you which one my children are behind, but just know if you happen to pick the right one, I will open the door and I will let you get to them. But you know what? Even though I'm going to let you get to them, that I'm not going to let you do more than what I say you can do. So even though it appears that you're winning, 
just so at the end of the day, I'm still seated on the throne. All right. And that's how God will do us, that sometimes God will hide us yeah. in the shelter of his wings. Yeah. Yeah. And he will keep us hidden from all hurt, harm, and danger. It don't matter how many times the enemy tries to come up and get us. It don't matter how many times people try to lie on us and, and pull us down. It don't matter how many times that our health begins we can begin to get health scared. It don't matter because we are hidden behind the shelter of God's wings. That God says that sometimes I'm going to hide you. That sometimes I'm not going to let you see some things. I'm not going to let you face some things. That sometimes I'm just going to protect you from it and I'm going to hide you from it. Because that is what God does for his children. This one in my notes. But because God hides us from some things and because we are his children, that sometimes we as parents, we got to hide our kids from something yeah, yeah. that we got to hide them and protect them from some yeah, things because yeah. some things they don't need to be seen, right. some things they don't need to be a part of, yeah. and some things don't they don't they, it doesn't mean them any good. So we got to protect them yeah. from something. Right. Yeah. It's 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 time now to where we got to begin to protect our children again. Mm -hmm. That we got to yeah. protect them sometimes from family members. Mm -hmm. That we got to protect them sometimes from outside things. Yes. But just as God is our protection, that we got to be their protection. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. I look at I look at this and I can just see what David is seeing. As he goes to sleep in the cave and wakes up with the chirping of birds. Bright and early morning. The sun is barely creeping through a, a, a hole in the cave. I can see David waking up, stretching and yawning, and he goes out and he kind of, the sun is bright, and he's wiping the sleep out of his face, and he looks up and he sees the mother bird. And he sees the little baby birds. And they all just a chirping and chirping and chirping. And they just are having themselves a good chirping time and, and all of this. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. the mother bird steps in front of him and, 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 and flails out her wings. And, 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 and you, you can see, you can see the baby birds trying to trying to peek over the wings because they don't know what's going on. And, and, and they don't know that danger is near. Yeah. And, and, and so they're just trying to see because they think that, that, that Mama Bird is just being mad and just being mean and won't let them play and won't let them sing and won't let them do whatever they want to do. But, but, but Mama Bird senses there's some danger around. And as Mother Bird is is, is 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 covering the baby birds with her wings, that that you can you can you can finally see that that that, that Mother Bird is starting to get angry because I, I, one thing that I've learned, I watch enough History Channel, and it, it, yeah. is, is that one thing you don't do is is mess with a Mama Bird yeah. or mess yeah. with a Mama Snake or mess with a Mama Crocodile or mess with a Mama Shark. Or, or mess with a mama bear because one thing about a mother is a mother will take care of her offspring and a mother will do anything that she can to make sure that her children are safe and one thing that I looked at as I was looking at the story is David is saying that when I look at that, that how that mother bird protects her young and will go out in front of all hurt, harm and danger just to protect the little children so that they can have a way in this life and that they can have a better life that I think of about God and how God when he was looking over the scaffold of heaven that he saw the enemy running to and fro and he saw that his children was damaged, damaged without a way to get back to him and so he says that just like a mother bird that I gotta go down and I gotta protect my children and so he said Jesus, I come here Jesus I got an assignment for you, I need you to go down through 42 generations and I need you to walk the dusty streets of earth because as a mother bird as we put in the mother bird the instinct 
to protect her young mother bird where do you think you got that instinct from you were created from God and the mother birds were, and my mothers were created from God that that motherly instinct that mother birds and mothers have to protect their young came from God and if that mother bird got that instinct to protect his young from God then God said to Jesus I got a, an assignment because my children are needing a way to get back to me and without me doing this that they will never have a way to get back to me and if I don't do this it won't get done right because many people have tried and everybody has failed that everybody ever since uh, Adam and Eve ate that, that fruit in the garden that, that sin has been running rampant and sin has been taking the life of my children but God said enough is enough and the time is now that Jesus went to that old rugged cross one Friday and he stayed there all day Friday and they took him off that old rugged cross and then he stayed in that barber tomb all night Friday night and all night Saturday night and just like that brother bird that Jesus got up early Saturday or Sunday morning with all power in his hand and he says that now I'm stretching out my hands because my children are now protected by me that if a mother bird can protect her young then how why can't I protect my children and I know that my children need my protection they may think that they are big enough to handle it they may think but that they can uh, go through this stuff by themselves. But just like those baby birds who are trying to look over Mother Bird and they see, they don't know the danger that is out there. It's just like Jesus. Jesus says, you think that I'm telling you not to do this because I don't want you to have fun or because I want to put a, a frown on your face. He says, but I know the danger that's around that corner and I'm trying to keep you out of uh, danger. He says, I know what the enemy is capable of. You may think that you can fight them. You may think that you can run from them. You may think that you can hide from them. You may think that you can outsmart them. You may think that you can outthink them. You might think that you can do this, but you can't do it by yourself. And the only way that you can get out of what he is trying to do is if you come behind my wings, if you come behind my shadow, if you run to me as a strong tower, if you run to me as a shelter, if you run to me as a strong as a stronghold, that's the only way that you can get out of what the enemy has set up for you. He says, you might think that you know what the enemy doing, but I am the one who knows all things. And because I know all things, I know what he did yesterday, and I know what he gonna try to do tomorrow. And you don't know what's coming down the road. And so you got to get behind me. So then therefore, when he knows that blow is going to hit me, and it won't hit you, then I can handle the blow. You can't do it on your own. And if you ever get out from beside me, and you get hit hard enough, you 